What's up guys, this is James and welcome to Anchor Designs. This is going to be a uh, first few sort of uh, episodes of, uh, of me restoring this um, uh, this Beaver Power Tools. It's a, it's a Canadian brand, uh, it's a 24 inch scroll saw. Uh, so follow along for the video and this is going to be the first one. It is basically me um, is disassembling. I've got to uh, make some uh, make some repairs, take uh, uh, take some bits off the machine. A little bit awkward, but all in all, it's a fantastic quality bit of kit. And uh, like anything well made, it comes apart so 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 easy. So uh, follow along, and uh, I'll be dropping in and out of conversations, just pointing bits and bobs out, and uh, follow along for the journey. So uh, stick around, and uh, let's go through it. Okay, well now we've got the uh, the introduction uh, done and finished. Let's get a, uh, a few little bits of history uh, whilst we whilst we're sort of watching the uh, me removing the motor on here. So the story begins in uh, in 1916 uh, with a with a gentleman called uh, Alexander Callender, from what uh, from what I found on, on on my research, and he had three sons and a silent partner. Uh, we're obviously in, uh, in in the world of uh, of a much different time back then. And in 1917, we we hit a financial crisis and uh, and a little thing called World War One, and this led out to the uh, to the buyout of uh, of the silent partner in uh, in 1917. Skip forward a, uh, a few years, and uh, we've got a few pests uh, sorted uh, sorted those guys out in uh, in, in Europe. And uh, we we start into the twenties, and going from the from the history here, the the, the Calendar family uh, actually uh, repurchased the ownership of the family business uh, from the Silent Park, just to uh, break away from the from the family history and the story. Uh, what you'll see me next is uh, I've I've got a uh, I've got to use a, a drift punch to uh, to knock out the uh, the hinge pin uh, of the uh, of the belt guard cover. I'm just going through a little bit of process and, and trying to be as gentle as I can to, to avoid any sort of marring, scuffing, scratching, and, and mushroom of uh, of the actual uh, sliding pin itself. So um, I go through using a uh, a, a brass uh, a brass punch that I've got. That's no good. So I've got some um, sort of longer tapered uh, taper pin punches, and uh, you'll see I eventually manage to get it off. So. Bear in mind, guys. Come on, give a guy a break. This is my first video, and uh, I try and sort of give the best, the best views, and, uh, and, and sort of give you the best understanding of, uh, of what I'm actually doing here. So, in case you didn't realise, back to the story now, and uh, I'm actually getting my source from uh, from Keith Rucker's uh, website channel, which is uh, I'm sure if you guys have watched this video, you've, you've bound to see Keith Rucker at uh, at the machinery. Uh, dot org. He's American chap, lovely, lovely guy. He's actually currently uh, restoring a, a massive, massive planer that he's doing. It's uh, he, he, he's you know an absolute inspiration for me. Some cracking videos that he puts out. But uh, going back a little bit uh, to the story, I'll, I'll start mentioning uh, through the history as it progresses a, a bit more uh, for, for familiar uh, companies that you've got. So we get to nineteen. Uh, we, we get to 1933, it says here, and uh, they acquired a small company uh, that were already making uh, woodworking uh, tools or machinery. Uh, but this is a little bit of a grey area uh, in the early days of the uh, of the history. Um, but from evidence that people have looked at from exact machines, it suggests that the, the actual calendar foundry had some sort of agreement uh, with the Walker Turner Company. Um, which were based in uh, New Jersey and they've seen a few beaver branded machines that are apparently quite clearly Walker Turner designs uh, you guys might be able to, to sort of confirm this with me but I'm, I'm just sort of going off um, you know what I can sort of find out and the main source of this is, uh, is, is vintagemachining.org check it out, have a look yourselves and uh, if you know better than I do please, please share your knowledge I'm always on the lookout to find uh, decent machinery, and although there is a, a fairly new uh, Chinese milling machine in the background, I really like buying the old stuff. And 
whether it be non-metric items and old English imperial stuff, you know, with my, with my Myford lathe or, or the little shaper that, that you won't see in this video, um, I'd much rather do something like this project and buy something uh, buy something better um, and all there uh, that's built well I mean the, the ease of everything working on this I, I mean there's no machines no scroll saws that you can buy today in market that has this this machine t-slot uh, that house the bolts in I, I mean it's crazy it's absolutely crazy uh, from looking at the um, from obviously where this was made, I believe it would have been single phase. I'm, I'm just making that assumption. I could be wrong on that. Um, but it's got a, an AI motor, which is a, a, an English made 240 volt uh, single phase motor on here. Uh, the belt is, is made in, in Canada. So a complete rough guesstimate is that, um, that it's, it might be the original belt. And uh, looking at the paint, it's, it's not bad. It's not going to be an issue at all to... To restore it's a bit of a you know grind down flatten back and and start repainting um go through the motor and, and paint some little bits and bobs and uh and change the oil we'll get to a bit of that later but uh all in all you know buy the old stuff save it keep it from going from scrap yard i'll get onto the story i actually found this machine later on and uh and, and go from there but uh great machine really well made and uh again it's a it's a company i've never even heard of and doing this video has, has sort of inspired me to to look into it and uh bring you guys along to it so uh yeah keep watching and just about to take off the uh the top table here thought i'd uh i'll get back to a little bit of the history in case you guys are interested so um basically to 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 go through uh quickly um we the next big entry of, of the history world war ii um they got really busy so absolute rapid growth as most manufacturing and engineering companies at, at wartime um started making a variety of products what they were i don't know i can't find that um, but you know it could be absolutely anything uh, the war ended and the company designed a complete new line of high quality uh, home shop woodworking machines um, it was a great many firms uh, that made you know smaller home shop machinery uh, in Canada so uh, and it survived through the war as, as sadly a lot of machines didn't manufacturers didn't uh, for whatever reason, maybe shortages of steel and materials, etc. And, you know, often skilled engineers, you know, there was a massive skill gap um, at the end of the war, so I'm told, um, until people sort of got back into the swing of things. And then we, we, we hit into 1953 and uh, Walter uh, Bride sold the, uh, the calendar foundry uh, to the uh, American uh, uh, conglomerate. Uh, and making the the Rockwell Manufacturing Company, uh, which had purchased uh, Delta Manufacturing Company uh, eight years previous to that. So in 1955, the Calendar uh, Foundry Manufacturing Company it was renamed the Rockwell Manufacturing Company of Canada Limited, and the Beaver brand uh, tool facility became part of the Beaver Delta division of Rockwell. Uh, there was a considerable uh, overlap between Beaver and Delta products. Uh, some of the beavers seem to be uh, less successful products and were discontinued. Um, but others such as uh, they did a bench saw um, was, was, quite, was quite popular. Uh, and I believe this model is uh, a beaver a 3100. As mentioned, it's a, it's a 24 inch scroll saw. And, um, you know, that's, that seemed to be the history up to the, up to the 50s. So... Uh, Let's see what else we can find out. Okay, guys, full disclosure. <laughs> if it if it looks bad and it doesn't look great, you know, don't put your fingers where you wouldn't put your um, uh, yeah. <laughs> it, it's pretty minging. It needs clearing out. Um, but yeah, it's 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 congealed, messy, thick, horrible gloop that was once oil. So, uh, yeah. Don't, don't 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 put your finger in there and uh, and and start sort of you know exploring. <laughs> don't do that. So we're now getting onto the stage now of uh, of taking the uh, the reciprocating motion housing. Uh, I, I haven't got a clue if that if that's the uh, if that's the correct word for it, but. Uh, 
like anything, it's not a complicated uh, restoration that we're that we're doing here. But it's uh, it just you know sometimes it's best to to take a step back, take a look around on things, uh, you know, see how uh, see how things would have been manufactured and and, and put together. Uh, you know, at first I, I thought. For whatever reason, it might have a little bit of a drain plug at the bottom. Uh, it doesn't, and it's actually made out of, uh, of, of three separate uh, compartments. Um, sorry, components, I should say. So you've got the base, you've got the arm, and then you've got this... Um, I'm going to call it the, the reciprocating box, if you like. Uh, but it's a lovely action, and, uh, and, it, and it's a, it's a self-lubricating uh action that it's got is that the right word or maybe it's got a self oiling um so yeah check it out but if you are doing a restoration just uh just take a step back have a look you know look under things look at the side of things try and uh, get torch and, and light and uh, and look into places and uh, just think about it really you know it's uh, if it's something quality it's uh, it would have been put together quality so just bear it in mind I'm going to go through and make a comparison. I mean, it's an unfair comparison, but I have actually got a, uh, a Delta little scroll saw that I've had. And I don't really have much of a use for a scroll saw, <laughs> to be totally honest. Although I do seem to own two now, which is, uh, which, which is a bit strange. But um, I'll make a bit of a comparison for you guys, uh, just for uh, what you get in the sort of... Uh, in the 21st to the 20th century but uh you'll be amazed absolutely amazed uh, i mean what we're looking at here is uh is the actual guide uh the guide housing for the your blade guide um assembly which uh you know if you've got band saws etc it's very similar to that and uh looking through the actual original manual i'll, I'll put a link in the description uh you can actually run files through this and, and sort of use it as a as a die filer which I'm going to investigate I haven't got any files and I'm going to have to make my own blades but uh, I'll get probably into that in the next video here is just an example here of uh, of me just take a step back look at it assess what's going on how it works and uh, yeah go from there <laughs> sorry guys anybody across the pond i do apologize uh but you know I, what i do sort of tend to find a, a lot of guys on uh on, on youtube there's this sort of uh the, the continental way and everybody hates the metric system but uh you know if, you, if you're smart enough and you've got the tools just use it both you know so what <laughs> This is just one of the little repairs that we've got to do. So this is the uh, spring tension uh, clamp that we've got, and it's probably been seized. And some guys come along and and hit it uh, and hit it with a hammer and just sort of sheared that off there. So that's something that we've got to make and uh, whack that on the Myford, and that's probably in uh, in, in number two or three, possibly uh, depending on how we go. This year, I actually attended uh, Maker Central, and I had uh, the pleasure of meeting Eric. He was a lovely guy, and uh, I'm a big fan of Hantel Rescue and the Fitzall uh, podcast, which is great. I wish they did more of them, uh, but editing and, uh, and actually <laughs> learning about uh, doing a little bit of YouTube with this series is, uh, yeah, I can see why they don't do it, but uh, hey ho, it was... Uh, us normal people, non-real YouTubers, uh, you don't know how much work goes into these things. Uh, but yeah, it's it's crazy. So uh, it's quite interesting, actually. Um, I, I watched this video of making these uh, little adjustables. And um, from what I understand, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a really old design. Um, and I think it's like 1879, just looking at the website that he's got. Uh, it's, it's really nice. So it's a, I'm restoring a, a Canadian machine with a, a Canadian wrench, as you guys call it. So um, nice little bit of history to tag in there, which is uh, which is really cool. So I'm not sure if it's a Canadian or American invention. I think they they 
common adjustable uh, spanner slash wrench was Swedish. I don't know if it's Baco, but uh, love a Baco spanner uh, or Baco as I think uh, it's it's pronounced. But uh, yeah, nice little tie-in, Canadian tool, Canadian restoration. So uh, uh, thanks, Eric. Great wrenches, mate. back in with the wrench on here and uh if you haven't watched the video actually it's quite interesting he's got a uh i hope i don't get penalized for saying this but he's uh, uh the comparison that he's actually got is uh is a king dick spanner uh which is made in uh birmingham in in england the one that i don't know if he got the sort of measurements off um but uh it's quite a, quite an interesting story on there terrible name horrific i'm probably gonna get this video banned for saying that word uh but yeah manufacturer um that that is that the actual spanner that he's got and they're quite collectible now i mean the larger ones i've got a few uh in the small collection but they're sort of uh 20 to, to 30 quid at the moment so uh keep a lookout on those uh on your uh hunting travels just tying back in with the story, uh, so we got to uh, 1955 earlier, uh, which uh, which the Canadian operations became the Rockwell Manufacturing Company of Canada, and then we we've got a we've got about a 20 year jump here for 1971 or 72. Uh, Beaver operations became uh, fully Rockwell International of Canada Limited. Um, and then uh, 84 Rockwell Woodworking Machinery and Operations were sold to Pentair uh, with the Gulf Operations becoming part of the Delta International Machinery Corp. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm an English guy, I'm just going off what, uh, what information I've sort of managed to, to pick up from the uh, from the website that I'm, that I'm on here. Uh, but if any of you guys know, I love the history of anything that I restore and, and do up. So just send me a line and uh, for the next video, uh, I'll, I'll drop those in and, uh, and, and make sure that we've got all the right information for you guys. So uh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> Cheers, Eric. Thanks, mate. Uh, you'll see the uh, we've got these little boxes in the back. Uh, I'm n I haven't got a great memory to be honest, and I'll be doing this over uh, quite a few weekends. So uh, little boxes, get a bit of masking tape, write everything up. Uh, just make it easier for yourself. Just it takes a little bit of time, but the time that you'd save reassembling and you know putting all the bits back together. A little bit of tape and uh, and some writing just to make sure that you know what you've got it just saves yourself in the long run so top tip just be organized best you can you'll notice as well that i'm, I'm using very few tools um actually on this and, and anything i do use is i kind of try and put back in a reasonably organized place uh, but main tool that i'm using for disassembly is this uh thor uh, nylon face mallet it just protects everything you know you see so many guys you know whacking a three pound hammer on something just to get it off uh, i use that as a very sort of last resort but uh yeah four hammers english made you know top stuff i buy them if i see them at car boots or flea markets etc i just buy them i've got loads of face replacement faces that i found at a job lot of so uh i don't mind uh i don't mind whacking them i use them for my woodworking side as well that i use and uh and, and sort of disassembly stuff with, with this as well so yeah if you see them find them well worth it nice and cheap you probably seen the, uh, notice a few times now that, uh, that there's like a um, there's an airline feed, if that's what you want to call it, going through the frame of the machine from the base um, uh, through the top. And there was a, a earlier on there was a a chrome plated copper pipe that was a, a nozzle, which is uh, it, it blows the the sawdust away. Uh, the saw's not actually working at the moment, so I'm going to see. Um, I'm, I'm going to sort of see what what the issue is. But as soon as you turn it on, uh, the motor doesn't work or turn or anything. It doesn't doesn't smoke or, or smell or anything like that. So uh, I'm I'm just going through it and, uh, and and seeing. It might need a new motor. I don't know yet. Um, but everything moves freely. Uh, the belt is is actually in pretty good nick, as I say. But I, I will be replacing it. It's uh, just standard. So. Uh, but yeah, it's got this airline. I'm going to go through and replace it um, either with 
um, micro ball copper going through everything, and then um, and then just using some um, uh, some airline uh, in between. It's not high pressure. It's just it's just a little uh, it's just a little a blast of air that that removes um, the the shavings. So. <laughs> okay guys full disclosure here i'll be honest this is the first tag i've had to really sort of take off uh, take off machine here there's no right way there's no wrong way they're all bad they're all a terrible way that, that i've sort of found but uh you've kind of just got to work with it so uh yeah i did the best in the words of ave basically don't be a 200 pound gorilla and try and rip it off you know, if it's not coming off easy, you try a different tool, try a different technique. Um, just, just don't go mad. Don't go getting a pry bar and chiseling it off. I want to keep uh, as many original, original parts in their original state um, as best as possible. And these tags that, that that really do make the machine what they are and, and give reference. To that. And this is just a uh, this is just a, a reference and serial uh, number tags, but. Uh, Again, it, it didn't come off great, but I got it off okay and, and everything's all right. It, it just needs to put me cleaned and painted underneath and then put back on again. Just using a, a little scrap uh, wood chisel that I've had. I found it at a car I, I turned something very, very quick on the, uh, on the DIY uh, wood lathe. Um, and it's really handy just for these little, you know, little delicate chisel jobs. Next tool that I'm using here is uh, it's made by Mac. It's a um, car automotive trim removal tool. Uh, completely useless for this. It's it, <laughs> it's almost embarrassing, but uh, it looked like a good tool for the job. But uh, I keep trying with it. I don't know why, but hey ho. Desperation sitting in here <laughs> with this, but uh, you know, just don't look. But I think these did actually help. To be fair, they're, they're pretty old. The blades are not not particularly great, but. Uh, as I say, just try different things. That's the only thing I can say. Again, going back to Keith Rucker, uh, uh, he's been advertising that he's got a mate or a, a, a guy who actually restores these. And I follow him on, uh, I follow him on Instagram actually. I've got T Tuckley, Kevin Tuckley or Keith Tuckley or something like that. But he's uh, he makes some really cool restorations on just the nameplate tags. Very specialised, but. Uh, some cracking stuff. Yes! Sigh of relief there, but as you can see, you know we need that. Uh, we need that uh, under the tag being painted and, and, and rust treated, and uh, to do a proper job on there. But as you can see, I don't know if that was me or not. I can't find the other the other piece that actually uh, clicked off, but uh, uh, that's what we've got. So. Uh, yeah, that's that's where we're at. I'm a strong believer of picking your battles, and, and as you can see, that, I, that tag on there is beautiful. Um, you know, I don't want to be the 200 pound gorilla and uh, and gnaw that up. It's uh, it's a really beautiful tag, so I've, I've taken the executive decision here to uh, to just masking, masking tape over it. There's no rust underneath that anyway, and uh, I want to preserve it rather than uh, you know try and try and go crazy on this one. But uh, that, that's what I got. My biggest hate in anything, anything to do with masking tape, is really cheap masking tape. It is awful stuff. Absolutely hate it. Uh, the stuff that I'm using here is, is by a company called Granville's, and uh, they're just a, an automotive supplier here in uh, here in the UK, and they, they make their own branded masking tape, and it's uh, it's okay. The best stuff that I've found is the 3M Blue stuff. Uh, you get the blue, uh, one inch or green, two inch cracking stuff um but it's it's 13 quid a roll and i'm just not you know i'm tight yeah when you're from the north you're just tight so uh this is what we've got <laughs> so again i'm wanting to just push in those corners and, and and get those creases in there so if i'm a bit you know clumsy with the paint it's not going to get on the tag um, but i'm using these uh, scraper blades these are great um cheap as chips get it off ebay uh, they're good for just trimming around, but uh, I really don't want to scratch this face, so I'm, I'm taking extra caution there. 
So a little quick story of where I actually found this machine, just while I'm masking, uh, masking this up. Uh, it's uh, exciting footage on, uh, on this part of the video, I do apologise. Um, but I, I got this on eBay, this was an eBay found, and uh, it was a collection only, because it, it must weigh uh, 30 kg, I don't know what that is in pounds. Uh, it must be around sort of 30, 40 kg. Um, it's a big old heavy bit of iron, and uh, it just fit in the back of my car. It just fit in the back of my car, but... Uh, yeah, weighed a ton, and I actually got it in a, a cycle repair shop, and the guy said that it was in the corner, and I think it came with the unit, uh, but it was down in uh, in, in Lincolnshire, um, which is uh, Midlands, sort of mid, um, mid, east, mid, uh, yeah, east Midlands of the UK, and apparently it came with the bike store, and the bike store's been open about 30 years, so uh, it was in there before then just in a corner it's been on the same stand uh, just a homemade pallet looking stand that they had from years ago and uh, they finally managed to put it on ebay I never really used it um, the blade they had on it was was blunt and really really rusty and uh, yeah that's where I come along and rescued it really so uh, I, I see myself as the as definitely the custodian for this for the for the rest of uh, probably hopefully the rest of my uh, my time using it and uh, ready for the next guy. There's that silver, uh, that copper plated silver um, airline hose on there. Um, the little blower that you've got and you've got these solid uh, saw blade guides as again you know very similar to a bandsaw but uh, just check the quality out on this uh, you've got these uh, lovely knurled, uh, knurled wheels that you've got on here uh, the height adjuster that's uh, that's cast and uh, and threaded into the into the uh, the head stock if you like the, the head part of the machine uh, just really really nice you know the quality on this is it's just a nice thing to work on just clarifying that last little bit there, the the, the, the rod, that, the adjustment rod that goes up and down, it's not cast, it's machine, it's got a little keyway that goes into the uh, the headstock of the machine, um, just a clarification there, you know, don't you, don't get excited in the comment section there, cheers. <laughs> One little downside, well not a downside, but every nut, bolt, allen, um, grub screw that we've got on here every size is different every size is, is just different there's no universal threading on here um, it's just different so a little top tip of, of everything that you take off that's either bolted on etc um, just put it back on and you, it, it's less less stress and um, again easy to reassemble so what we have here on the uh, on the blower nozzle that we've got uh, there should be an adjustment so as you can see there that just the top of it has uh, is sheared off and it's it's been like that for some time so uh, definitely not me on this one uh, so I'm just going to go through the stages now flattening off the top uh, center punching it and then I'll just drill it out on the on the pillar drill and uh, and, and either retap or uh, we'll see if we get lucky there's me just Deliberately demonstrating a uh, a completely useless process of uh, of trying to of trying to tap that out of there. It ain't gonna move. It's it's looks like it's been uh, stuck before. There's some marring and uh, and dints on there. So I'm just gonna replace the pipe. I think so. I'm just gonna drill it straight through and then uh, and then re restart and refresh. I'll just go uh, briefly back to uh, a little bit of history that we've got here. So we finish off at uh, 72. So uh, Beaver then became um, uh, became part of the Rockwell, uh, or, or sorry, I should say, renamed the Rockwell uh, International of Canada. We jumped to 84, 85, and um, everything was sold to Pentair, um, and is now the uh, the Delta International um, Machinery Corporation. 
Um, then we jump forward a little bit further and we go to 2004 and Penta sells the power tools to uh, that giant that is Black and Decker and um, it, it, the whole group then became uh, Black and Decker Canada Incorporated. Uh, 2011, uh, Stanley Black and Decker uh, sells uh, the complete brand to a, Taiwe a Taiwanese manufacturer uh, Chang type industrial company uh, which is uh, Delta Golf Operations so uh, again in the next video I'll show you a, a Taiwanese Chinese dirty knees uh, comparison of the Canadian made versus the Taiwanese and uh, it's it's just a sign of the times really just going through the uh, the facts and stats on the machine uh, it's a 24 inch um, scroll jigsaw uh, I don't know what you guys call it over the pond, if it is a scroll, jigsaw, fret saw, I don't know, I'm not 100% sure. Um, the base is a, is a cast iron, uh, with all, the, all the surfaces are ground, which is, uh, which is great. Uh, the, the table is, uh, is, is mounted on the trunnions, uh, and it's got a, a, an adjustable uh, tilt, I, I don't know if you, if you noticed that earlier, but... You can uh, you can go up to a forty five degree angle, which is uh, which is pretty nice. I'm just actually looking through the uh, for the operation manual, and it's called the overarm. Uh, the correct name is the uh, is the overarm, and uh, and the plunger on the top. Uh, the actual blade holder is called uh, the chuck, which okay, I, I I didn't know that. And you can tension and uh, and it can actually uh, take a five six or a seven inch blade. Uh, which is the uh, which is the ad adjusting uh, position on the on the head uh, that you've got a little brass adjuster just tells you um, uh, what sizes that you can put to sort of go up to. Um, apparently, you, as I mentioned earlier, you can actually go um, you can actually go and put yourself in a uh, file in there, which is uh, which is pretty cool. Um, and you can put jeweler's blades in, um, scroll jigsaw blades, etc. You can do some really fine work uh, for what it seems. So it's pretty cool. And uh, as well as the filing, um, the, the, the metal files that you can put in, um, you've also got a sanding stick. I'm not familiar. I'm assuming it's just a um, sanding paper coated rod that puts sort of um, stuck into the top there. But I'm not sure. Sorry guys, audio went a little bit from there, but um, I used the James and Shipman small micro pillar drill, uh, and then I've moved up to the uh, the, the larger uh, semi freestanding. Um, uh, it's a junior machine. I think it's uh, 60s, 70s. And as soon as I put in the uh, the larger uh, 332nd drill bit in there, uh, the actual stuck um, uh, uh, broken thread uh, just popped out. So I was really lucky on that one. So uh, happy days. This is a little bit makeshift, but uh, for whatever reason, I cannot for the life of me find my Sykes Picavent um, uh, bending kit that I've got. I've got a flaring tool, and I've, somewhere I've got with it is the is the uh, the bending tool. So what I've done here is I've just knocked up uh, two bits of hardwood, uh, a bit of mahogany, uh, drilled I think nine sixteenths hole through it, and uh, and then I've uh, just bent it round really just to form that just to form that shape. So a um, bit of a bodge, but uh, did the job. And uh, there we go, that's pretty much uh, part one of, uh, of of this video. I, I hope it was okay, it's my first crack at this. Um, but yeah, that's where we've got to. So there's a, a, a bit of a quick photo of, uh, of a disassembled. We've got a, a few boxes full of bits. And uh, thank you so much for watching. So if you want to find out more, hit that, sus that subscribe button, hit the like, and uh, leave a comment. That'd be great. Thanks, guys. See you soon. Cheers.